تذكري لما قلتي لي انك رح تتزوجيني بلا فلوس وبلا بيت تذكري كنت تحبيني مع اني مش داخل دينك تذكري كيف كنا هيك تذكري لما امك شفتني نايم بيت اختك قالت لي انسى عنك واتفقنا نضلنا هيك بلا دور وطنطنت بلا كرافات وصبحيه لما الاقي ام حمد سنو ام 28 for another two days. I'm half Lebanese, half Jordanian. Hello, I'm Haig. I just turned 30. I play violin. Um, salut, je suis Karl. Uh, je suis batteur du groupe Macha J'ai 29 ans. Hi, I'm Firas Abu Fakhir from Mashra Layla. I'm 28. I uh, play guitar and keyboards with the band. <laughs> En fait, tout a commencé il y a 10 ans. Euh, on était tous à l'Ayoubi, à l'université américaine à Beyrouth. On était tous dans le département de design et d'architecture. Et d'ailleurs, on a appelé le groupe Projet du Nuit, Mashra Layla, au tout début, parce qu'on ne savait pas que ça allait. Euh, être notre métier. Kem 20 dirhams. 20 dirhams. 20 tout le truc ou bien un Toute la boîte à 20 ouais. On veut pas toute la boîte. Ouais, Palace yeah. I was a choir kid in school, but I, I still don't know how to read music and I'm not very good with theory. I have a good ear for harmony, but that's about it. A lot of us are not educated in music, you know, we didn't have this the student mentality of this is the way it should be or this is the way it can be or can't or whatever and so I think this helped us very much in the beginning find a, a, a way of making music together that was very important for us Ahmed, You'd have these ideas, these central themes, and everyone would go sort of in a circle doing a solo on the same theme. <laughs> the first time we write together, and that was the only thing we knew how to do, we were all taking turns trying to show virtuosity, right, with our instruments. Progressively over the last 10 years, we've, we've turned into a band that composes together. It's not, it's not just about playing together, it's about composing together. Let's lay down on this bed of roses. Fuck you. I was in a school, Jesuit, hyper ennuyant. And I started to play piano at the age of 10 years. Et puis à 15 ans, j'ai, on a créé un groupe de rock. Et euh, en fait, c'était notre seul moyen de se défouler à l'école parce que y avait, <laughs> on était obligé de, de, on était obligé de prier deux trois fois par semaine. My mother was Jordanian, but she actually grew up between Morocco and then Rome. My father was uh, Lebanese American who went to the States for a few years, came back, you know, really sort of under the impression that he's a white person. I went to an American school. Basically graduated from high school not really knowing how to properly speak Arabic. Kind of learned the language by trying to write music in the language with a band. I think when I was turning one year old, um, a window, like a, a bomb blew up next to where we were living and the window broke on me and my mom went crazy. So they took me and my brother to Abu Dhabi, to the Emirates, and that's where I spent my childhood basically until I was eight. And um, there, I think, uh, my, my parents were very keen to make sure I learn Arabic and I don't lose the language because I'm not in Lebanon. Both my parents are 
of Armenian origin. I was born in Beirut in the Armenian neighborhood. But the first five years, I I was I was living in uh, Anjar, which is an Armenian village right next to the Syrian border. It was built during the French mandate in Lebanon because you had like this influx of Armenians who were coming to Lebanon uh, after the like massacres and genocide and somehow like even until we went i went to study at the american university of beirut my whole uh surrounding was just armenian people even though my even at school even though my father was a, a professor for islamic uh, philosophy and arabic literature but arabic uh, wasn't my language E is beautiful. She. <laughs> you know, in Arabic music, you don't really have this sort of legacy of music that you listen to when you're a teenager because you're angry and you want to break things, right? We don't have that thing that you get the first time you listen to grunge or rock or metal, you know, that ability to feel different because of music. We were 20 and we wanted to, to make music in Arabic that felt like that for us that felt like uh, like us around that age you really start to sort of explore you know the country and the political situation and how people operate you know it's the first time that you sort of have to leave your your childhood your bubble right and see how other people live through college um, so there was a lot of ideology sort of circulating at the time and at the moment it felt like we are in Lebanon, so we have to make music in Arabic, and this is the only right way to do it. We don't always have the same political ideas, huh? right? But I think there are some core values that are impossible to, to sort of disagree on. And when it comes to that, it's sort of really all that matters, right? Is that sort of bare ethical core? Day we were doing a <coughs> we were doing a CNN um, quiz like a test to see which uh, European leaders we would be based on sort of these multiple choice questions and we turned out to be very different people right there's no need to get into the details of which one of us is a fascist but um, <laughs> and which one of us might lead the free world. <laughs> <laughs> En fait, la liberté pour nous dans notre travail, c'est de, 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 déjà de pouvoir écrire notre musique et d'enregistrer de, notre musique sans contrainte. Euh, et on, je pense qu'on a, qu a la chance de pouvoir faire ça parce que on a eu la, la chance de travailler sans label pendant ces dix dernières années. On a pu produire nos disques nous-mêmes. Donc on n'a jamais eu vraiment de, de contraintes et de, 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 de personnes qui nous disent qu'est-ce qu'on peut dire, qu'est-ce qu'on ne peut pas dire. On, a, on était censé avoir un concert à Amman. Et euh, ils nous ont interdit d'aller jouer à cause d'une ch chanson. Et c'est là que vraiment on a senti que qu'elle est vraiment très fragile cette liberté, que ça pouvait être vraiment à n'importe quel moment quelqu'un pouvait nous, nous nous interdire de de, jouer, de de nous exprimer librement, surtout dans le monde dans le monde arabe. <musique> It's impossible to speak for a generation or to speak for anyone else, right? Um, and you can't you can't plan to do that. I think um, I think for us maybe again because we weren't trained as musicians, the only way we know how to mu how to make music is to be completely sincere about it. We didn't plan on having an audience, really. So you know, with the, with the first album in particular, everything was just stuff that I would never have imagined myself, for example, saying in front of an audience full of strangers in Jordan or in Egypt or in you know, other cities in Lebanon, even in Beirut for that matter, you know, there's a lot of stuff that felt like 
if I say this, am I gonna get shot? We don't do it for the sake of provoking. Actually, usually what happens is we don't even think it's Provoke. a problem. <laughs> and what ends up happening is people tell us, oh, that's gonna be a problem, you know? That's usually what happens, honestly. And so uh, we don't think, I don't think it's, it's something that crosses our mind very often. It might cross our mind when we talk about uh, countries like, uh, you, know, who, you know, the places that we know are, are much more conservative than, than Lebanon, like Saudi Arabia, like you know, Kuwait or places like that. But that's kind of, for us, it's kind of a, a lost cause. And like, it's going to be very tough to play there, you know. So we don't even think about it, honestly. The fact of it is that we live in societies where something as simple as love Right, is controversial, um, <laughs> really. So at some point, it becomes very difficult to avoid controversy. If people get annoyed, then they get annoyed, and if they don't, then that's great. Piraz is your name. Nice car. Okay. But in Sarshwa, you're too tall next to me. That's why. That's why. That's problem. Lebanon is where I was born. It's where I grew up where I experienced the, the most powerful experiences of my life, I guess. And um, in a lot of ways, I think there's a, lot, there's a lot that's wrong, but I think I like it enough for me to say that I want to stay and, and try to be part of the movement of people that's trying to make things better, I think. Tu vois, quand tu, tu pars, tu sors de Beirut, ça te manque très rapidement. Et une fois que tu reviens, tu as envie de repartir. Mais j'en ai besoin quand même. Ouais. Lebanon is this. It's a it's an upside down house, and uh, and you're always trying to balance yourself. And uh, it's very exhausting, and more often than otherwise, you feel very nauseous, <laughs> and you need uh, you need an aspirin and a motidium. It's always very challenging. You know, everything is so much more difficult there than it has to be, but in a lot of ways, that makes you discover things that you wouldn't necessarily discover otherwise. Be that about the world or about yourself. It feels claustrophobic sometimes because it's a it's a very small country. It's like our entry point to the world. So, in that sense, like it's always like a love and hate relationship with Lebanon. Confused lover. Confused lover. <laughs> long, di long distance, long distance lover. lover. Dirty lover. What? <laughs> Jesus. Tough lover. Tough lover. Next. So it's a t tough question because generally being a woman in the whole world, especially in the Arab world, is a lot tougher than being a man. I mean, we get so much privilege by being a man, so... And women who are as creative, as hardworking, sometimes don't get the recognition, recognition that they deserve. I would just walk um, around naked and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, Carl likes to walk around naked even Anyways. as a man. As, we have to make that clear. It's actually a little bit of a problem, to He's be honest. just naked all the time. No, I feel that a woman's body is very sensual and very beautiful. As opposed to a man's body? Yeah. I think men's bodies are quite sensual. I think my sex life would indicate that as well. Look, it's my personal opinion. I I think that Card. a woman's... Tell us, tell us. <laughs> Misogyny in general. Um, people who aren't passionate. Body odor. <laughs> um, when I meet somebody who's... Uh, who has no interest in doing what they do or is in a place where they don't care about what they're doing and it's just kind of like blasé all the time and I hate that. I don't know, if I'm gonna be completely honest, I think it's actually people who are nice to me. <laughs> I swear, I think I don't know how to, I don't know what to do with that. I'm dating the, ni the nicest person in the world right now and it's completely disorienting. I have no idea what to do with it. <laughs> Make the elections in Beirut happen properly. 
that's, happen full stop. That's really magic. It needs magic for that. And I'd undo Trump. I think I'd, I'd like to undo that from the li this generation that I live in. And undo the f far right nationalist <laughs> movement. <laughs> movements right now that's yeah, happening. Undo what happened to Beirut, like in terms of heritage and destruction. Like there is nothing left from the old our heritage, like the old traditional central hall houses and all the like the old fabric of the city is completely destroyed now. I would bring that back. I would do anything for no. um. <laughs> Would you kill a person for love? Kill a person? Oh. Apart from my own Would person. you rob a bank for love? Would you... Would you... I feel like these are particularly Hollywood-like... Uh, <laughs> scenarios. <laughs> these are very Hollywood scenarios. Would How you? Would, would you? you it's like them? crazy things. Would you go that far for love? If you really rob a someone? bank? Yeah. I know what to... I would rob yeah. a bank. Yeah? Mm. For love or just for fun? <laughs> <laughs> so we can't. I would do anything. For love. You won't even let me sit on the window. I don't love you. <laughs> Ten years of my life I gave you. <laughs> I'm taking the fucking kids. Sucker, 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 the skirne. Look at the Stuff like my dog.